Hello and uh, welcome once again. Uh, I'm sure of you know that I'm trying to recover from COVID-19, doing a little better. And I'd like to get to a comment that someone sent me about changing fuses, changed the fuses a couple of times and they kept on popping. And sometimes intermittently, which means sometimes yes, sometimes no. The question that he had was in the, the air conditioning system of his car. So when I looked at the schematic and, re and I received the schematic, right here, you see there's a relay involved, like we usually have. There's a motor involved, and he had a problem with the blower motor going on and off, like we said. So uh, first of all, when you have a motor, the fuse protecting it is a high amp fuse. As you can see over here, 30 amps, that's quite high as compared to let's say a PCM fuse which is seven and a half amps or 10 amps, a motor draws a lot of current. Now it doesn't matter for windows, for a power windows, for a fuel pump or things like that. The higher this ampage of this, the more likely it'll short and you'll pull more current. So let's examine it first. So he took a fuse, he measured it with a meter like I have over here, and I'll show you. Measured it, it was open. How did he know it was open? One possibility is always the fuse is 12, 12 volts on both sides of the fuse. He measured 12 volts on one side, measured zero volts on the other side, he knew that that fuse popped. Not that the fuse is shorted, a fuse cannot be shorted because a fuse is a short but there was a short on the line so he went 12 volts here zero volts here we have a short okay now put back the fuse another one popped then he went and he said okay let me take the relay out took the relay out put a fuse it was good until he started driving and then it popped again so what was done right? What was done wrong? First of all, let's analyze the circuit, just like any other circuit. First current starts flowing here from the battery to the fuse, comes out the other side of the fuse to C5, black and white wire. Where is it going to go first? As you see over here, I wrote control side first. This is the control side, the coil. Load side second. Current has to flow here to activate this part the coil then this part will be activated the switch the contacts so one will be closed to two as you see by the orange line then current can finally flow to the blower motor and this goes to ground now first of all when it comes to this you have to see what catches your attention like i said there's a short and it keeps on popping. You're changing the fuse, it keeps on popping. Not necessarily at one time, intermittently, but nevertheless, there is a short. So, <clears throat> again, paying attention to the rating of the fuse. 30 amps is a lot. That means we're drawing more than 30 amps in order to blow this fuse. Maybe 35, maybe 40, we don't know because it stops after that. After 30 amps, that's it. That's when it blows. Number two. We have a diode over here. <clears throat> we don't see too many of these diodes, except sometimes we see diodes across a coil <clears throat> or across a compressor clutch or a, a, across a coil, like I said. And that's when you have a, the, the relay is on and off. There are spikes, voltage spikes being created. In order to save the relay or the component, we put a diode across it. <clears throat> now in this case over here you see the diode over here as you can see as you can see the diode the diode is not across this is a symbol for a diode not across the coil actually it's almost like it's in series and the reason probably being because we want to make sure that the battery is connected correctly if the battery is connected in verse let's say the cables were, in, were reversed that means the negative of the of the battery would be going here. We want to protect the relay and the motor. So this diode will only act 
or conduct uh, to say only when positive is connected to the positive of the battery and negative is connected to negative of the battery now <clears throat> that's something you don't see too often but that caught my attention the rating that catches my attention and this catches my attention that we have a motor okay now <clears throat> we know this is short a shorter ground somehow now how do you go about it well Let's look into it first of all. Now, <clears throat> here's a meter that I have. We put obviously on volts. How do we measure the fuse? And hopefully when I recover from this uh, uh, terrible uh, virus, I guess, hopefully I'll be able to make more videos. Now, and to show you much easier. We, all, we know we put this on 12 volts to measure the car battery. Okay? This is the, this is the probe, the positive one. The other one goes to negative any ground how did i know i had a blown fuse because i went one side 12 volts with this meter and the other side zero volts that told me this is blown i have a short fine what can i do right now to tell me to see if i have a short can the short be this motor the blower motor can the short be in the relay itself can the short be a diode, which is probably inside of this? Can a short be <clears throat> the wire? Maybe that broke off and it's touching ground somewhere. Maybe this wire broke off. You see this uh, green and yellow stripe wire? Maybe this wire broke off from going to this and it's making contact to any part of ground chassis ground on the on the, on, the, on, the, on the automotive on the auto on the car possible all possible how do we go about it well <clears throat> whenever you have a, a short like i said before since we're using the meter to measure voltage we can also use this meter to measure ohms a resistance a short to ground how <clears throat> here's the meter we have it on volts dc Okay, we're going to go to the lowest setting, the lowest setting on ohms. This is the ohm symbol. We go to 200 ohms. Why? Because we want to see 0 ohms, 5 ohms, 10 ohms, the least possible resistance. And that's causing to blow this. So now, <clears throat> let's go. <clears throat> the same probe that we measured 12 volts. One side was 12 volts, the other side was 0 volts. That side, that 0 volts, that's now disconnected because the fuse blown, that's the probe that we keep and measure ohms. In other words, <clears throat> I have two sides. Ohms you cannot measure with power connected. We know one side is 12 volts. That means it's connected to the battery. We don't want that side. We want after the fuse to measure ohms. So therefore, <clears throat> we're going to go to the other side, which goes to the load or the relay. And which side is that? The one that measures zero volts. That means that zero volts, that's not connected. That's a side that goes to the load. And that's the one that's after the fuse that's the one that's blown that caused it to blow so again <clears throat> we go to ohms keep the probe on the same part of that fuse and measure ohms and i guarantee you you'll measure very low ohms how much is low ohms maybe five ohms zero ohms very low ohms what will that do for me now by doing by keeping my ohm, my probe on ohm scale of the meter, I'm able to detect a zero ohms, and I'm able to detect when I take something or disconnect something if the short went away without keep on putting fuse after fuse after fuse. In other words, I measure zero ohms right now at this point. This is the point that measures zero volts. This is the point that I go to to measure zero ohms. Right now I measure zero ohms on the meter, even though obviously it's not connected, obviously. Zero ohms, I have a dead short. Is the problem here? Is the problem here? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take away the relay. I'm gonna take away the relay, I'm gonna take it out. 
I want to isolate the problem. Is it on the control side, the short? Is it on the load side? I'm going to take the relay out because it's easy to do that. And I'm going to take a jumper from one to two and put it in those terminals. Connecting me to this, to this side of ohms, of the fuse, which are measuring ohms. Now, that will allow me to see the short is on this side. Is it on the load side or is the low is the short on the other side? So again, <clears throat> keeping my probe on ohms on this side from here to ground, I measure zero ohms. Not good. Took out the relay. Okay, took out the relay. When I took out the relay, the ohms went away. The short went away. Fine. But what does that tell me? That doesn't tell me much because once I took out the relay, it could be this is the problem. And when I take out the relay, I'm not activating the motor, which might be shorted and blowing the fuse. Or there could be a wire broken and touching chassis ground, but I won't be able to tell that because I just took the relay out. That's why I say do this. <clears throat> leave, the, leave the probe here. Take the relay out. <clears throat> take a... Uh, jumper from one to two in the terminals when i take that and i leave my probe here on ohms guess what i still measure short what does that tell me that tells me that short is on this side it has something to do on this side not on this side why because i just took out the relay this is not connected only this is connected so again i measure zero ohms from here respect to ground that means it's on this side is it, is it, is it the wire maybe? Is it the motor? What you can do is you can disconnect the motor. When you disconnect this, see this connection one and two? Disconnect the, the motor. I leave my probe here. If I disconnect this motor, I had a short here and the short goes away. I'm dealing with a shorted motor. If the short stays, somewhere is problem from here to here. As this was with him, the short stayed. When he jumped this, just like you want to jump a relay to see if it works. Well, you're jumping a relay now to connect this part of the circuit to see if the short is still there. Once the short is still there, from I, I connected this. That means it could be that this is shorted. Or this is shorted. I took this out. I know it's not the motor. The problem was this was exposed. There was an exposed wire making contact to chassis ground. Now, it didn't blow right away. Only when he drove it and the vibration caused that wire, which was exposed because there's no insulation on it, to touch ground intermittently. So what you do is you leave the meter, right? Let's say... It's popping fuses. The customer is complaining it's popping fuses, right? But when he only when he drives. I take this. I leave my probe meter over here, not on this side, on ohms. I measure zero ohms from here to ground. Not good. I wiggle the wire, the full length of the wire, whatever is connected to it. When I wiggle the wire the full length, that exposed part of it will be making contact to the chassis and I will catch it because it'll show me zero ohms to ground so it's just not enough to put the meter there wiggle it wiggle the wire the fact that he said that it happens when he's driving tells me it's a vibration problem something is making contact some part of the time not all of the time and that could be something from vibration usually wiring harness wirings or things like that leave this over here Wiggle the wire, the whole full length, and the exposed part of it will, be, will make contact, you'll see a short. If it doesn't make contact, you'll see whatever you have to see, 50 ohms, whatever it has to be, open, whatever. So therefore, or the resistance of this motor. So again, to reiterate in conclusion, a, a, a tough problem. Problem was keeps on popping fuse keeps on popping 
We don't know if it's the relay. We don't know if it's the dial. We don't know if it's the motor itself. What do you do? Take out the relay. Short this part of it. Put a, a, a jumper across it from one to two. Now you're connected from here to the motor. Now we still have a short. That means it's either something in here. Maybe something in the terminals itself. Maybe it's the wire touching something like, like was the case. Or the motor itself. Disconnect the motor. If the short goes away while I have this probe here, that means it's this part. So please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. And like I said, hopefully I'll do hands-on, hopefully when I recover from this. But thanks for the well wishes and things like that from uh, viewers. Hopefully I'll get to other ones. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon.